Hey, Master Gardeners. I've been out again this morning collecting a few more moths under the security light, and I found one of the largest moths that is found in the in the Maryland and actually all of eastern United States. This is called an imperial moth, and it can be up to three to seven inches inside. And it, this is one of the most variable moths that we have because it has so many different cover, color varieties. Super well camouflaged. You would never think of yellow as a well camouflaged color. But come and look at this one. I got one in, I'm gonna put them in a plastic sleeve during this so that you can, um, so they'll hold still during the video. And this will keep them from getting, escaping during the video. So I just have them in a plastic sleeve. They're safe in there because I'm gonna let them go in a couple minutes. But let's lay it down among the leaves and you take a look. See how well camouflaged these adult imperial moths can be among the foliage. So look at these guys. Can you pick him out? Can you see? There's some mulberry leaves here and there's some tulip poplar leaves, different kinds of leaves. And then my moths are inside these little packages these sleeves and so there they are there's your imperial moth three to seven inches big 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 guy in the silk in the silk moth family here's the one i was just holding right here look how well camouflaged they can hide among the leaves and the foliage in the woods so this is a moth that in the larva stage it's attracted to uh, oak oak trees as well as pine trees so deciduous and evergreen type of moth this is a huge moth of family. They're called the silk moths. And we talked about them one other time. They're in the family called Saturn Dei, which is named because of Saturn, the planet Saturn has rings around it. And some of these moths have rings on big eye spots like the Cercropia moths. So this is the, happens to be the imperial and it's the most widely distributed. And when I say variable, so most of the females have uh, more of the yellow colors. And one of the characteristics are lots of these little speckles throughout. See the little dots throughout? If I roll her over, there's the underside. You can see lots of dots and things on them. So that when I say variable, let me show you in the textbook. This textbook is Caterpillars of Eastern North America, an, ex an exceptionally good book to have if you like identifying. Look at all the variable caterpillars. I couldn't catch one for you. This is our adult imperial moth, but the larvae come in various colors of browns and oranges. And in their youth, these pictures don't show it, but well, that green one shows it a little bit. They have these huge spiky bodies with little white tips on them. The green is the less common caterpillar of this imperial moth, but a very widely distributed, and I find them, you can find them on sassafras, sweet gum trees, and I, they say they have they even found them feeding on um, Norway spruce. So let me turn this guy upside down. I sure don't want her to get overheated in this. You can tell the male from the female by the, oh, that is a male. Look at that. Look, he's extended his antenna there a little. That is a male. They say that males are more likely to be attracted to the lights at night. Of course, they fly a lot more miles to find a female than the, than the girls do because they're, they're out in search for them. So a beautiful moth. Big brown pupa that's going to be, you know, the, as thick as your pinky and a, at half the length of my pinky. And they are unique in the fact that they put their pupa, it's in the ground. They bury it in the ground for protection. So it's not as much of a silk maker as many of the other silk malls. The other silk malls, you know, they make our silk clothes from those guys. So this is a beautiful native moth that can lay motionless among the leaves in our deciduous woodland, so pretty cool moth to know. Now let me show you another one that I found while I was out this morning. This is a sphinx. This little guy is a sphinx moth. Can you see his feet? Oh, slow down, little guy. Slow down, slow down. So there, there's a little sphinx. It, well, can you see his green, green well camouflaged? This is a fast move, moving moth. Let me take him out of here. Fast moving, and you probably know the hummingbird moth because that one flies in around your plants and pollinates. So you see him. This moth happens to live for a month at a time, whereas that imperial moth, he only lives for a few weeks. Hey, hold still. Oh, he's going away. He's going away. Oh, there he goes. Up and away. Gone, which is a good thing. So the sphinx moths are fast, uh, 
uh, fast flyers. They can do something unique, which means they can hover around your flowers. So that, that, that guy is a nighttime pollinator. That hummingbird moth that you see during the day, he's a daytime pollinator. But they can hover like bats and things and hummingbirds can, can do. So quite unique. Think, think Smoth is a whole different family of moths. And look what else I found. So this is another mantid. And I think that this one might be a mantid that's our native. I'm wondering if it might be a Carolina because she tends to be a little smaller, but I'm not fully sure. So anyway, just wanted to share with you some of my moths before I let them go. So let me warn you, when you're catching these, you need to, if you practice catching them in or, in, at all, I don't like to put them in a cage because they flip around too much and they can break their wings. If you just have a little book with you and you just lay them in your book and gently hold them inside of there until you examine them, that's probably the better thing to do. So there, hope you enjoy the Imperial Moth.